Hello and welcome to the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. I'm Jane King and with me today, Lane Mendelson, the president of Vantage Point AI. So great to have you. Thanks, Jane. So fascinating. Um, some of this, let's start with what your company detected in terms of retail using artificial intelligence. Then we'll kind of dig a little deeper from there. Sure. Well, um, as you know, we forecast for thousands of different stocks and, and 13 different sectors. Retail is one of them. And what's interesting is that over the last several weeks, as we've seen, the market's been very volatile. The overall markets, the Dow, the NASDAQ, mm -hmm. the S&P oh, yeah. have been clobbered. And a lot of people were not so sure that we were going to see the holiday spending that we typically see because of what the overall markets were doing. November 20th, um, our artificial intelligence indicators and in vantage point started to indicate that there was going to be strength setting in. And um, I think there were a lot of naysayers at that point mm -hmm. in time just because it, it didn't seem like that was going oh, to be the case. People had written retail off. It, totally written. Yes. Yeah, it was totally written. Brick and off. mortar done. So. Right. Well, and, and the thing is, is the retail stocks, they don't just go up or down because of what's happening within retail or what's happening with, with the overall stock market. But there are so many other sectors and so many other factors that will drive, impact, and influence retail stocks. And that's what we're using artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to do is to, to find those hidden patterns in data and look for those relationships. And then based on those relationships, use that information to give us early warning signs and clues as to what the retail stocks are likely to do. That's really fascinating. And then, but you mentioned there are other sectors that you look at too. So what are those? Well, uh, just to give you an example, when we're forecasting for retail stocks, we're looking at transportation stocks, of course, but we're also looking at technology. We're looking at healthcare. Uh, we're even looking outside of stocks. We're looking at uh, the general indices, both domestically and internationally, but commodity prices as well. You know, currency prices, uh, precious metals. These are all factors as well as interest rates because all of these factors do have an ultimate impact on what the retail stocks are going to do. And if you're not analyzing all of those other factors, you're not seeing the full picture. Yeah, sure. I mean, gas prices go down. We got a little extra money to spend at the stores or whatever. So it's all interrelated, uh -huh. that's for yeah. sure. So, um, what do you think the big picture here is then in terms of artificial intelligence and what it could mean for just stock picking and the future of how we live? Well, artificial intelligence is changing the world. We've seen that in so many different areas from, you know, medicine to self-driving vehicles. Of course, we've been involved in artificial intelligence since the late 1980s. Yeah, so that was, that's fascinating, by <laughs> the way. So, okay, so finish this and then let's talk a little bit about the history of the company. Well, the thing is, is that I don't think that artificial intelligence will ever replace humans. What artificial intelligence is going to do is it's going to free up humans who are currently doing mundane tasks or tasks that could be automated. And that will allow the humans to do things that can't be automated or done by machines. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a, a more effective, more efficient way of utilizing human talent. And for us, what we're doing is we're providing artificial intelligence technology to humans so that they can use that information to assist them mm -hmm. in making the best possible decisions at the best possible times. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you've been working in artificial intelligence since the early 80s, right? So, I mean, how have you seen it change since then? Well, the biggest change that we've seen is, number one, the computing power. The computing power is so much more advanced now than it was back in the late 1980s. And that, that's when my father started developing the artificial intelligence in Vantage Point. So it's something we've been refining and perfecting for decades now. Mm -hmm. And because the computing power is so much stronger and more robust, the amount of data that we're able to consume and mine and look for these hidden patterns within stock and commodity data, we can do it so much more quickly and we can ingest so much more data. And this is what's allowed us to increase our accuracy and forecasting over the years. So now, does somebody buy your services then to stock pick or to, are they industries that they're trying to kind of know the macro trends that are going on in their industries? How does that work? We do have some institutional clients and hedge funds that utilize our technology, but primarily we empower individual traders and investors. So people who are managing their own funds, their own retirement accounts, they want to obviously protect it and make it grow. Well, to do that, especially in the volatile markets that we've seen, you've got to have tools, you've got to have insights, and you have to have an edge. And with our accuracy being as high as it is, over 86% accurate, that's going to allow traders and investors to stack the odds in their favor and allow them to make the right decisions at the right times by having insight that they otherwise wouldn't have had if they didn't have this type of technology in their corner. You said 86% accuracy. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it, it, it absolutely is. <laughs> no human is. can do that. Well, no human can do it. And uh -huh. we actually have not been able to do 86% the entire time. It's something we've been working up towards. And as the markets have changed and evolved, and as our technology has evolved, 
we've been able to pick up on patterns that previously we didn't even see that they existed. And it's these hidden patterns in data and, and, and how the U.S. dollar interacts with crude oil and how crude oil interacts with the euro, which interacts with the DAX and the, the mm -hmm. CAC and then ultimately the Dow. Um, we saw this. It all started back in the 80s with the, uh, the 1987 stock market crash. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think it was, it was a, an event that was here in the U.S., the 87 crash. Really, it started in Asia, swept across Europe, ultimately landed here in the U.S., and that's when my father said, we're living in a global economy, and traders and investors must have a global approach, and that's when we started to design the technology. Fascinating. Thank you. So, And thank you as well for joining us. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site. Have a great day.